again, you're just applying substitution. So all we're simply going to do is plug the g of x function as the input value for the f of x function. So it's basically 1 over, instead of x, we're now replacing x with g of x. Does everybody see what I did? I just replaced the input value for the function g of x. What does g of x equal? g of x equals the square root of 1. Or I'm sorry, the square root of x. Right? Now, we don't really need parentheses to protect the square root. It's not really separating it. You can't apply anything from there. So we don't really need the parentheses there. Um, so now, that's it. Can't, I can't combine anything. Um, we could rationalize the denominator, um, absolutely. But um, we'll get into rationalizing the denominator. So for right now, that's not going to be my focus, because um, we're going to do a focus lesson on rationalizing the denominator. Um, but again, even in this example, when we're looking at this, we again want to identify what the domain is. We don't need to rationalize the denominator to identify the domain, all right? unless it's saying simplify it um, without a radical in the denominator. You don't necessarily, or the test doesn't look like this, then you want to rationalize the denominator. But we'll learn about that. So anyways, we know that there's a couple things, right? Whenever you have a rational equation or function, you always set your denominator equal to 0. Always set your denominator equal to 0. And then you solve for x. So add 1, add 1. Square root of x equals 1. Now, how do you undo the square root? You square, square it. X is equal to 1. X is going to equal to 1. And does that make sense? If I plug 1 in for that, does that make the denominator 0? Yep. Yes. So you could even do that by inspection. You don't even have to do the hard thing. But if this was a trinomial, though, if this was a trinomial, you know, you'd want to make sure you set equal to 0 and, do, and go for it. I'm not done. That was your question. Because. Um, 1, that go ahead and makes it equal to 0. But there are other numbers, though, that could be an issue here. Because remember, anything that's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. right? You can't take the square root of a number that's greater than or equal to 0. So when we're looking at this, um, here you can only plug in positive numbers. right? I can only plug in positive numbers. Now, I can plug in 0. That works. Square root of 0 is what? 0. 0 minus 1 is negative one. negative 1. So that works. But I can't take the square root of any negative numbers, right? So I can basically take, I can take the square root of all numbers from 0 to 1. Would you guys agree with me? Like 1 half. Can you take the square root of 1 half? Yeah, it's 1 fourth. 1 fourth minus 1 is negative 3 fourths. Okay? So you can take the square root of all numbers between 0 and 1. Actually, I'm sorry, you can take the square root of 0. That's included. And you can take the square root of 0, right? But any number less than 0, you can't. Yes? The denominator? Because you want to find out what numbers in x make your denominator equal to 0. You say, what down here is equal to 0? What values for x make that equal to 0? So you say, that equal to 0. 1 is the only number that makes my denominator equal to 0. So therefore, 1 is using a parenthesis. 1 is not a part of my domain. That's why I use the parenthesis. Right? So you always set it equal to 0 and find out which values are not going to be a, So whatever x is equal to is not a part of your domain. So 1 is a parenthesis. It's not a part of my domain. 0 is, because you can plug in 0. Then what about like 4? Can you, can you do other numbers greater than 1? Yes. Yeah, you can do 4. 4 squared is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. So you do union 2 to infinity. And that's what your domain would look like. Anybody have any questions on why I didn't go any farther than 0? It has to be greater than or equal there. Bart? Anybody have any questions on union? Yep? Um, wait, so why does the second one start with the 2? Oh, shoot. Thank you. That's a good idea. Good point. I don't know why it does either. I just randomly put it in there. It should go off at 1. I have a question. Yep. How come there's a parenthesis next to infinity? Because infinity, you cannot have infinity amount of dollars. I wish. Right? But infinity is not a number. Infinity is like a concept of where it's going, of where it's, a pro, where it's going to. You know what I'm saying? 
that make sense? You can't have infinity of something. So when you have the bracket, that means you contain it. It's tangible. It's a part of the function. Infinity is not attainable. You can't have infinity. So that's why it's not included. I mean, not, not so much it's not included. It's just not something that can be contained. Does that make sense? Because I know I do. I always use the vocabulary, not included. Well, infinity is included. It's just not something that 